Hi everybody. I thought today we'd do a little show and tell and history lesson on dot grease guns and grease gun fittings and grease gun caps and how that all ties back to antique Alice Chalmers tractors. So bear with me. Uh, I'm not an expert expert on this, but I'll uh, show you what I've learned along the way. So, uh, the car fastener company of uh, Boston, I believe they were out of, um, started off, well, they got a longer history. Uh, I'm kind of going to breeze over that. But what I'm referencing here is the virtualsteamcarmuseum.org website. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description of the video here. Um, and you can read up more on it. But for what we are talking about today, the grease guns in particular, um, I'm going to kind of jump ahead in their history to this, to that part of it. Um, they started out making hardware for like carriages and old automobiles, these snap type fasteners. Um, and then in a, a, the early 20s, I believe like 22 or so, they started producing um, pressure lubricator fittings, you know, grease gun parts, so to speak. Um, which brings us to like this ad here. Uh, they made, it was, in a nutshell, these type of fittings were only produced for just a handful of years and they basically became obsolete. The more commonly known uh, grease fitting, Zerk, that you'd see like even today, uh, ultimately won out and became more popular. So these ones, this style was phased out. Um, you probably know there's a few different kinds of uh, grease fittings out there. Um, I guess I should show you. This is what I'm talking about. This is the dot style of grease fitting. It has an acne thread on it that the tip of the grease gun uh, engages on for a positive lock. And then it's still got the normal little spring loaded ball that even a modern greaser has to, to keep the grease in. Uh, but we'll get back to that in a minute. For now, um, I want to just talk about the, the history of it. So this, like I said, they, they started making these, I believe in like 22 or so. I haven't been able to really find any great history on narrowing down what years and stuff. Uh, for sure they were used and whatever, but I'll, I'll kind of share what I know. Um, so they were started to use on antique cars and tractors in like I said, the early 20s up through the later 20s, through at least like 26 for sure, or at least on the tractor side of things. Um, and after that, they kind of disappeared. They, I think they were basically phased out and then not made any longer. Um, but they, they offered um, different varieties of the same gun. Like you can see, this gun is a little bit different than this would be the earlier version and then a little bit later on they changed them basically i suppose made them a little bit cheaper to produce this this tip end was all formed into one um, these are the grease fillers to fill the gun i have yet to see one of these in real life um, and these are the different fittings that were available, just like there again today. You got straight fittings, you got 90 fittings, 45s, all different varieties of these of these fittings. And then later on in uh, the car fastener company's history or the dot, they were bought out by Alamite, 
I think I'm saying that right. I think that's how you say that. Elamite, Elamite, Elamite. Um, and for a while they sold them, and then after that they were basically, you know, discontinued from my understanding. Um, to me, the Elamite ones are the pin style, where you have you know your fitting, and then either side of that fitting is a little T that you. Uh, lock the grease gun onto. Um, I'll probably have to do a video on them someday too, but for today, for today we'll just focus on these dot style. Um, that kind of shows a better uh, visual of the different angles and fittings. And then they came with a little wrench to install them. I do not have one of them either, or I've yet to see one of them. Uh, and then at least when it got to the Alamite version of the company, there was the regular and these mogul type fittings, which I guess were a little bit heavier duty or bigger, heavier duty -er than the regular ones. Um, don't really know much more about that than, than what this ad tells me. But, and I almost wonder if by the time I don't know this for sure, but at the time the Alamite took them over, that they maybe quit producing their own guns and only provided, say, this tip to put on a regular pump style gun. Because if you notice on this ad, there's no guns available any longer. It's only the fittings and possibly the tip. Where these, you could buy the gun and, and the fittings. And there's at least three different versions of this old gun, which basically comes down to the size of it, the length of it. Um, once it got to these, I'm not sure how many different sizes. There's at least two different sizes for sure, probably three again. I'm not sure. I, I, I'm still kind of researching all this stuff myself, but I just figured I'd share what I know so far. So, like I said, I'll, I'll link to this website where you can, you know, maybe read these a little bit better. Some of these scans aren't the greatest, so you can't really make out some of the details. But there's a lot of neat old uh, ads and stuff all compiled into one place. So it's worth checking out if you got a few free minutes in, into this kind of stuff. I'd, I'd, I'd look at it if I was you. Okay, so that brings us to my little collection of grease guns. Um, I've been kind of collecting these through the years and you don't see them come up for sale very often at all that's why when I do basically I've been picking them up just because you don't come across them that often and they're all a little bit different every time I figure oh I got enough of them you know I don't need to buy any more I find another one that's just a little bit different than the rest <laughs> so I end up buying it kind of starting a little collection here uh, but I do have a reason to have these. Um, they're gonna, we'll get to that in a minute. My Some of my old Alice Chalmers tractors uh, need these and will use these. So I actually will clean these up and make them functioning tools again and actually use them when that day comes. But we'll get to that in a minute. So I think what we'll do is kind of go through um, the differences on the outside visually first, and then I'll take them apart and show you the differences on the inside. Because uh, like I said, every one of these is different than the next in one way or another. So, and then I'm going to make some assumptions here. I think I have them roughly laid out oldest to newest, but I don't know that for sure. I'm just kind of going on what I think, and then if anybody knows any different, please feel free to comment or let me know because I'd love to know more about these. So I'm assuming this is the oldest one, this brass one. And like I said, the different sizes are, it would just be different lengths of, of tubing. You know, this is the littlest version. And I, I think I actually have a longer brass one around here somewhere, but I couldn't find it here today. It might be back home in Wisconsin. Uh, if I end up finding that one, I will make a video down the road and, and update and show you that one. But for now, um, they, all of these have the same uh, stamped in logo, let's call it, 
dot trademark high pressure lubricator car fastener company ltd hamilton that's one note this is the only one that says hamilton and ltd all the other ones have the same it's pretty faint on that one they have, but it's, it's the same stamp except it's boston and no ltd all the other ones are that same way Boston, no LTD. Well, they're the same, same exact logo on everything. These are all pretty dirty yet. I only did just the basic minimal cleaning just to kind of show you here today. Someday I'll, I'll make a follow-up video to this. I'll get them all cleaned up and rebuild them and, and kind of show you all that part of it. But, um, so, like I said, the early ones, they're threaded on top and bottom. Where these later, I'm assuming later ones, yeah, they got to be later. Um, the top threads off, but the bottom is formed into that steel tube. Um, and they're all the same as far as that goes, just different lengths. These ones are all basically the same length and then this one shorter so i'm assuming this would be the little version and i don't know if this is the medium or the big version you know if there was actually one bigger yet or not these are the only sizes i have so that's all i know um if you notice like i said i'm assuming this is an earlier one because the the, the end piece is the same as this early brass one and then from there on they they change them they're smaller all have the same handle with the exception of this one you know these are all the you know fancier curved this is more of a just flat and then it's peened over formed over on the top and this, of course, is going under the assumption that these are all original parts as they came from the factory and they haven't been flip-flopped and swapped over the years, which would be possible. I can't rule that out completely. But as far as I know, there hasn't been any monkey business with these and, and they're all original as they would have come. Um, all the tips themselves are the same. Um, with the exception of these early ones are smooth. The two, which again, I'm assuming are later ones, have a little ring machined into the bottom. Whether or not that's actually for some purpose, I do not know. Or if it's just, just the way they machined them. Um, but as far as I know, there's no actual reason for that little ring there, that little lip. Uh, but other than that, all the tips themselves are the same. And they have, oh, I don't know if you'll be able to see in there or not, but they're, they are, they have that Acme thread, internal Acme thread. So they screw into this grease fitting. It's like a, it's like a, I don't know if I'll be able to do it with one hand here. Maybe they, they screw in with like a like a half a turn. They they positively lock right on there, so they can't slip off. So in a way, you know, arguably these are actually a better system than the modern greaser you see today. That you know they can kind of slip off. They don't lock on really well, so to speak. These are are you know when they're screwed on there, they ain't coming off with that Acme thread but they're more expensive to make and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I can see why they were eliminated, but it is a pretty neat system, I think. Um, like I said, we'll get to the fittings themselves in a minute. I think for now, what I'll do is I'm gonna take these all apart and show you the internals of them. So give me a second here. Okay, you ready to further go down the rabbit hole of dot grease guns? <laughs> okay, I got them all apart here so we can show you the differences internally. 
Uh, let's start at the back of the guns. Uh, basically, those are all the same. They all got the Acme thread to screw down to activate your gun. They all should have this, uh, you know, leather cup seal, uh, kind of like you'd see in an old uh, tire pump. Um, most of these are in very poor shape, and I'm going to actually have to rebuild them, put new leather seals on them. Uh, this one's in pretty good shape, so you can kind of see what it should be. But they are all peened over, non uh, take apartable, <laughs> so to speak. So I will have to uh, get creative and modify them slightly to take them apart to put the new seals on them. Uh, what I might end up doing is, you know, grinding it off, uh, putting the part in the lathe and threading them to be able to accept a nut uh, to rebuild them. Like this one. This is the only one that's different. This is the only one. And that's the one with the funny different handle on it. So this one is it has is threaded with a castellated nut on there, so you can take this one apart to rebuild it. Uh, I don't know what the difference is there, why that one is that way and the rest of them aren't. Um, but that's probably what I'll end up having to do to modify the other ones to rebuild them to make them uh, the same way. Um, so that's pretty much the differences on that end. Uh, the tubes are pretty self-explanatory. They're all the same with exceptional length and minor cosmetic details like, you know, the knurling in the center on that one, no knurling on that one, uh, center on that one, and then none on that one. Um, this one... Okay, let's go and move on to the tips then. So this one, part of the tip, you can see that D-shaped center hole. That fits onto the D-shaped end of the plunger, let's call it. That uh, That's what the end of your um, gun, that's what... Oh, let's see if I can do this here. That is what's activating your your ball to let the to let the grease into the fitting. Um, and then so that goes in, and then this screws on. And then the tip goes on. And let's, I'll, I'll leave the tips for a minute. So this one, it's different because, of course, it's, the gun is different. So this one, that actuator goes in there. And then the there is a, uh, well, what should we call that, a nut? So that goes in. It's hard to do this all one hand on camera. And then this screws on to the back, and the grease goes through that weird triangular machined opening. And then this whole thing, uh, like that one, the whole tip screws into the gun. This one simply slips into the gun, not threaded. Okay, so there's another difference. This one is different again. Like I said, they're all different. Um, the actuator is built into the tip where you can't you can't remove it without without wrecking something. It's it's like formed into place. Um, so there's no no taking that apart without really wrecking something. And then this threads, again, we go back to threading. This one threads into the housing. Okay. 
This one, very similar type of plunger tip setup, only this one, that part is brass, where that one was steel. And this one, it almost looks like it, I don't know for sure, it might, I'm even hesitant to say that, but this brass might be threaded internally into this because it's it's also it's staked into place here and it almost looks it's probably hard to see that on video but it almost looks like this might be threaded i don't know if it is or not though i'm not going to screw around with it and mess it up but this one no longer threaded here again just goes back to slipping into the housing um and then this final one goes back to steel insert, rolled over, no stake, and then slips into the housing. So whether or not, like I said, I have these in the right order as far as progression over the years, I don't know for sure. There might be, you know, like say these two might be flipped or something. Um, but it, I just find it very interesting that they kept changing their design over the course of the production and each one is a little bit different. Um, okay, so back to tips. So all the tips, like I said, are the same. Um, they all have that internal Acme thread. They all have a just a flat washer that sits down in the bottom there. And they all should have, so the washer goes in the bottom first. And then they all should have this stepped leather seal. This is the only one that has one in, you know, pretty much intact. So I'm going to be very gingerly show you this one. Um, it's pretty neat. So I'm gonna to have to figure out how to make these someday, form these. Um, I think that'll be a fun little exercise, make up a couple of dies and, and, and form a leather seal, kind of like we did for the transmission on my 612 LS, if you've watched those videos. Because um, that basically seals off the grease to keep it, the pressure of the grease going into, um, how should we say that, going into the fitting, as opposed to uh, leaking out between the, the nozzle and, or the tip and the fitting, I guess is the only way I know how to explain that. It's the seal, that's the seal to keep the grease going where it should. So, I think that about covers these guns. Let's move on to fittings now. One second. So fittings, that's kind of what got me started on this whole little collection. Uh, when I bought my long fender Alice Chalmers 2035s, uh, 25, 26 uh, vintage, I learned that they used these dot style fittings. So, and most of all of them were, were missed, missing or replaced on my tractors. There was only a couple original ones left. And me being an attention, very much attention to detail type of guy, I wanted to put all the correct style fittings on these tractors. I actually have a few tractors, but um, for the sake of discussion, let's you know, they're, they're, let's talk about the 25 and 26 um, Alice Chalmers 2035s long fenders. Um, they had these on them. Um, and like I said, I wanted to get, so I found some of the fittings. Okay, good. Well, the fittings aren't much good unless you have the correct gun to use them because you can't use a regular grease gun on these. So that's when I started 
finding the guns to all go along with them. And like I said, I kind of went down that rabbit hole and started discovering that there was all different versions of them. So it's kind of a little bit spiraled out of control here, but um, I'm not collecting them just for the sake of collecting them. Like I said, they're actually going to be put to use. Um, and then if I have extras when I'm all done with all my projects, then I might possibly sell what I have left over to other people that need them. For now, I haven't been um, selling any of the things I find. Um, so uh, these fittings, like those ads I showed you earlier, um, most of the time they're just these straight, straight fittings. But I have a few, like there's one of those extra long ones in there. And then I have some of these, uh, that'd be a 45 uh, one there. And what's neat about them, it's actually the same fitting. It's just one of these threaded into that housing. So you could take this fitting out. That's kind of a neat, you can kind of mix and match parts, so to speak. So say you needed a long... 45, you could screw that fitting into this adapter and have a different combination. Um, this came with this particular batch of fittings when I bought them. Um, and I can't, you know, say for sure if this is right or not. I'm just going by what it was, what came with it. So these are supposedly all the different cars that this, these dot fittings fit or go on, you know, Auburn, Doris, Duesenberg, you know, blah, 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 down the road. I've done a lot, excuse me, down the line. Uh, like I said, I don't know, you know, for sure if that's right or not, but I don't know if that might possibly help somebody out there. Um, like I said, there's, there's a few other combinations. There's like, there's this 90, same story, well, it'll thread out of the 90. There's one of these, Oh, I don't even know if that's a 22 and a half or whatever degree, 15 angle. I'm not sure what that is. Less than a 45. Those ads spelled out all the different combinations. There's another 45. And then, so these are the caps that go on. The fitting when they're on the tractor to protect them keep them clean uh, which is awesome in itself um, I can get back off with one hand hold on so they snap on there rather well um, and it's pretty neat they actually have the dot Car Fastener Company, Boston, uh, stamped or engraved, whatever, right in the, the top of the grease cap. So that's pretty neat. So then the back, we have a little piece of wire in there, bent in like a D-shaped, so that the leg of the D rides up against, you know, kind of a friction fit in there then. And then there's supposed to be a little rubber seal, I believe, in the bottom, the end of that, to, to seal it even more, I think. And the reason I say that is that, you know, this is an original one. Well, I also got in contact with a guy here a number of years back that went through the effort of making one run, one batch of these reproduction dot grease caps. I mean, exactly like original. And I mean, exactly. I mean, the lettering is the same. They are the same size. Everything. About as perfect as a reproduction as you could imagine. But he only had these done once. He used what he needed. He sold a few to friends of his that were restoring some old cars. And he has not made any more, and he has no plans of making any more. So I basically bought whatever he had left for my to have for myself. Because at the time, 
I couldn't find any original caps. I have since found a small number of original caps. And I probably still don't even have enough original ones to complete all my tractors. So I'll have to use some of these reproductions. But I'm okay with that because, they, like I said, they are very, very well done. And anyway, the point of the story was they did the same D-ring. And they all came with a little rubber piece in the, in the end. Like I said, I don't know for sure if that's the way they should be or not, but that's the way these reproductions came. So I'm kind of assuming maybe they should be. So those are those. And like I said, I got a, a number of them. Um, and then just recently here, actually within the last week, I got a few more fittings that I located in caps. And then this this last, which gun was it? This gun, I think, was the last one I got. Um, so that just came today, actually, which was what made me uh, decide to finally put this video together. Uh, but anyway, these newest fittings, I got same same kind of fittings, different combinations of, of angles, whatever. Okay, that's great. Same normal fittings. But the caps, I got four more original caps, but they are different. They are a little bit different. Same lettering, um, but the, the style of the actual cap is a little bit different. And I don't know why, to be honest with you. I, I don't, this is the first I have seen these. So if anybody knows uh, any history on them or specifics of, you know, was this, was this an earlier version or was this a later version or... So the inside is different. There's no little wire, D-shaped wire. These, instead, if I can get the camera to focus, they got a little, little tiny, uh, what do you want to call it, a little stamp mark, a little dimple in that one spot, and then the, they're, they're split. So it's basically, again, a friction friction fit to, to hold on there under the, under the fitting and they're actually arguably a little bit better because they cover all of the, the acme thread where these oops, these other style of cap don't 100 percent cover the, the acne thread, the, you know, they cover the important part, you know, the dirt isn't going to get in the end where it matters, but they are a little bit different there. So I don't know, like I said, I, this is, I just learned about this literally a couple days ago, so I haven't, just haven't been able to find any research, you know, what, what the difference is there, but I thought it was neat regardless. Like I said, if anybody knows, comment or, or get a hold of me and let me know. Um, hold on here. Okay, so to tie this all back to Alice Chalmers, um, I don't like to make claims without being able to back them up in some form or another. So, like I was saying earlier, that the, the long fenders, Alice Chalmers long fender 2035s, use these dot style grease fittings on their tractors and I, I'm not just claiming that you know I got proof um, in this it's a copy here of the parts list for Alice Chalmers um, it's the 1314-A effective April 15th of 1925 um, and you flip to page 81 it it lists you know, all the different fittings and grease cups and things that the tractor uses, right? Well, it specifically calls out the dot grease gun in fittings. Um, so there's the grease gun, the grease gun filler, the wrench, and then the appropriate uh, fittings and the dust caps at the very end. Um, so, I mean, there's proof in the pudding right there that these tractors use these 
Uh, it's kind of interesting looking at the prices too. The gun was five fifty. The caps were three cents each. Boy, I wish you could get them for three cents each. Now I had to pay a whole lot more than that for the caps I bought. <laughs> but anyway, so there's there's one form of proof, and then you go to this other reprint copy. Um, same parts price book, but this is 1314-B, a little bit newer version of the book. This is effective February 25th of 1927, um, but essentially the same manual, just updated. And by then, they were still calling for the same uh, dot-style grease gun fittings. So, I mean, they for sure used these. Um, for how many years? I don't know for sure. I would personally say they quit using them when they switched to the 2035 short fender in 27. Um, to my knowledge, they never used these dot style fittings on the short fenders. Uh, none of my short fenders have them. None of the short fenders I've seen have them. I can't necessarily prove that because the short fender parts manuals don't call out for a grease gun one way or the other. Um, but I'm pretty confident that they never did uh, use these. And that kind of goes along with these, these dot style fittings basically became obsolete in the late 20s. Um, most references you see by 26, 28 or so, they were no longer used. So, when the Alice switched to the short fender, I could very well see them switching to the more uh, commonly modern style of uh, Zerk fitting that you see today. Um, and then as far as how far back in time Alice used these, I don't have any proof proof of that either. Um, for sure, you know, 24, 25, 26, they probably used these on the on the long fender, 2035s. But before that, I don't know for sure. Um, when you get back into the really early like uh, long fenders, like you get into like the 1830s, a lot of those fittings were actually grease cups instead of even zerks of any kind. So I'm not sure if they transitioned from grease cups right to these, or if there was anything in between those two, that's one little bit of area of knowledge. I, I just, I don't know for sure. There again, if you guys know, I'd love to hear. Uh, I'm still kind of been learning about that, researching that. But uh, um, I think that's pretty much covers it, what I know. Like I said, when I ever get around to, um, actually rebuilding these completely and 100 percent cleaning them up and making the new leather seals for there and putting the new leather cup seals on the on the plungers uh i'll do a follow-up video and, and show you all that and, and you know whatever someday wait on the road when i actually get a a tractor done i will uh show you them installed on the tractor and how they're used and all that kind of fun stuff i think that'll be kind of neat to, to show it in, in operation but um, I think that pretty, pretty much covers it. I think I'll wrap this video up here. I just thought it would be neat to to show you all that uh, that style, that dot style of of fitting, because uh, you don't see you don't see them very often because they were only used for just a handful of years. So one of those neat little details that that make these tractors in. Uh, interesting and, and kind of a, a part of history uh well thanks for watching everybody i will uh check back some other time with a different video thanks for watching have a good day